So, we will be moving to the pre-scene discussion of 2021 December. Actually, for the December 2021, uh, we had a pre-scene discussion from the CA Sri Lanka. It was a Zoom, Zoom discussion. So, there was no recording of that in that manner. So, therefore, I will do that uh, analysis of the pre-scene at a basic level and then move into the question of the paper. So, when you look at pre-scene, it is about a company called Equip Office Solution Private Limited and they have given you the background. So, when you read the background, it is about a person called Henry Emanuel. He was born in 1940 and he came to Sri Lanka in 1965 and he started the company in 1966. So, 1966 he started this company. It is actually the office equipment uh, sale company or your main business is to sell the office equipment. So, 1966 he started and he and his brother, he and his brother started the company. So, the 20 percent of his ownership is with his brother George and he owned 80 percent. So, basically they started that business, if you read it out just to get a background. He had four children, right, their names are given there. So, those are the people who are with him later point you will see that they are the people who run the business. So, he basically uh, started a business and he maintained quality and he developed that business. But with the country opening up for local economy in 1977, 1977, he basically got an opportunity, got an opportunity to expand its portfolio, expand its portfolio. So, 1977 only the company started you know going faster. So, you could see that they are importing machines, right equipments from different countries and different brands and supplying to the market. The second ge generation that four children also started getting into the business, right. You will see that uh, 1970 to 1990, the employee number, employees number in the company grew from 40 to 450. That is between 20 years, 40 to 50, 450. Then when the telecom sector was liberalized in 1996, the company realized there is opportunity in that business and they started two companies Equip Communication, Equip Computers in 98 and 99. So, they are mainly with the engineers and current chairman, current deputy chairman of the group Eric Emanuel, his son also be part of this company and started developing these businesses. So, you will see that in 2008, four children of Henry joined the director board and his brother who had 20 percent ownership basically sold his 20 percent ownership or transferred his ownership to the four children, 5 percent each. So, now only the children are getting ownership in the company, 5 percent each because 80 percent ownership with the chairman of the company. So, you will see that they further Another fully owned subsidy was established in 2005, right? Then the youngest daughter, Christina, who has a business engineering degree from Oratua, started as a CEO of the company. Then 2012, the Henry Manuel stepped down from the chairmanship and Herbert Emanuel was appointed as in place with 80 percent equity ownership. So, this is how the ownership is started to change. The chairman 80 percent ownership transferred to the, the Herbert, the son 80 percent. Now, in addition to 80 percent, he also has 5 percent ownership by the George, the brother who sold that 20 percent shares to the five, four children. So, each one got 5 percent. So, 80 percent age of Henry Herbert is now 85 percent. So, 85 percent he has balance 15 percent between the three other children. So, then you go back on the history, these are the business is all about and then they have given you the vision, mission values of the company, these are just to understand the business and the values, business operations.
and they have given you the accounting related information, how the accounting is managed by the company, they work with the QuickBooks system, but they realize that it's not integrated to the ERP system, I'll come to that little while. Then you can see the business of each and every company, the holding company, the parent company is EOC, EOSL, which mainly, primarily their business is on portfolio of copiers, photocopy machine, printers and other units. So you can see the revenue components, photocopy machine business comes to 40%, printers, multifunction machines 20%, digital duplicates, duplicators 5%, you can see the other business uh, segments, air conditioner 10%, IT related product 15%. So, these are the EOSL, this is a main company, revenue is consist of these products or the turnover is generated through these sales. And then company provide three services or three types of business, equipment sales that is like photocopy machine, printer, whatever we are talking, you are equipment sale business. Second, consumable. You should know that each and every equipment you need consumables. Like those consumable sales falls another portion of the sales. Then a servicing, maintenance. Regular contracts with this, all the companies who bought these machines need regular maintenance. For that you get service contract, that is another revenue generation segment your company has. So there are three segments of revenue, equipment sales, consumable sales, service revenue. 2019 and 20 company generated significant gross profit. We'll come to the financials little while. 19 and 20 company generated good GP because there was a demand for the goods. I am sure, like everyone knows that that's the period the COVID started to increase, right? AI demand for off equipment and higher markup is kept for exchange loss because the exchange loss expectation the company had been keeping higher markup and making money. Then the 2020-21, 2021, higher coastal sales percentage was reported. Higher coastal sales was reported 2021. So that we will come to the numbers little while. The subsidy companies, ECL, ECPL, EEL. So you can see that there are three subsidy companies, ECL, ECPL, EEL. So those are three companies, they started over a period of time, all three are 100% subsidies, 100% subsidies of the parent company. Then HTL is a company, they bought it, HTL is a company, they bought it, where they invested 80%, where they invested 80%, these are the product lines, the business is involved, okay. So financial strategy of the company. Financial strategy of the company. This question had been more comprehensive in terms of presenting the information, right? So you can uh, understand the case better, right? Rather than you identifying the strategies and the policies, here they have clearly given what the strategies of the company. Group relies on internal source of finance, that means retain earning for growth. So whenever they have opportunity of growth, they use their internal source of funding than a debt financing. The debt capital of the company is limited, so they do not depend too much on debt capital. It is a very limited debt capital they are using. Later we will talk about the financial numbers. Group wishes to use borrowings for working capital income. More than the capital expenditure for the working capital investment, they use the debt financing. However, the company settled the loans, even if they take the what are the facilities for the working capital investment? They settle the working capital loans in a short while prematurely because they have excess cash in hand. So the company used to have excess cash, so they don't want to depend on the borrowing. They settle the money earlier. Company always have positive cash flows. Company had always positive cash flows and cash being held in money market accounts to generate additional income instead of investing in risky investment. So see that difference. Most of the company will be having short of cash, but this company have enough cash. So they do not uh, have loans, they try to settle the loans earlier and they keep the money in the money market instrument which are generally short term instruments. So their returns are also lower, short term returns are generally lower. So they do not mind getting a lower return 
rather than taking risky investment. This is the financial strategy of the company. So they are not highly geared, I'm sure very low geared, very low geared company. They don't depend on debt. They use it only for short term and they settle prematurely. So that's an indication that company have excess cash, right? They, they settle the loans fast as possible. Investment strategy. Due to restriction in investment policy, chairman and the board of director go, don't wish to diversify further by investing external project to achieve higher growth. So this company don't want to grow significantly by getting into different different companies or buying into companies. They don't believe in that. They basically always relied on organic growth. Organic growth means you develop your own businesses, you grow on your own. You don't go and buy another company. I think only one company they bought it after some times of convincing with the other shareholders. Basically they bought it. That's the last company where we talk about HTL. 80% they own. But other than that, generally they are not uh, very famous for acquisition strategy. They always believed in organic growth. So they develop from their own business, whatever relevant business, they create a new company and grow that company rather than you go in buying another company for the growth purposes. So this is their investment strategy. Always they prefer to invest excess funds in the uh, money market instruments rather than investing in excess funds in the capital market or other similar instruments. So they don't invest in the share market also. Even though they excess funds, they don't invest in share market. They invest in the money market. And their investments and their projects investment external is out. They only develop their own businesses. They develop, if at all, they create new company on their own rather than going and acquiring company. So this is their investment strategy. So we looked at financing strategy. Now they are talking about investment strategy. Now disadvantage, when you look at it, just look at it. When you don't go into acquisition, your growth is limited. That's what they have said, import, they have a restriction. Second, you are going to invest in money market instrument. Money market instrument give you lower returns. You don't get higher returns. So you don't take much risk and you basically invest, you don't invest in capital market, that means you don't take risk. You are investing in a very comfortable investment opportunity which are money market instrument and get a lower return. So profitability of this company considered to be a lower than it should be, the ideal situation. And you don't use debt financing. Always we remember that gearing, the what is the objective of gearing to make more return to shareholders. You should be gearing yourself to get better return for shareholders. So if you don't borrow money, if you don't borrow money, you are not giving enough opportunity of earning extra for the shareholder. So these company do not do that because they don't believe in that. And maybe they are always comfortable with the organic growth. So in terms of investment, in terms of debt or the financing, they are having significant weaknesses. Okay. Dividend policy, majority of shares are held by Herbert, the chairman himself, 80% owned by him. So the company does not give much priority to dividend decision. Why? He is the man who is running the company. So he doesn't want, and not like other companies where there are many shareholders who would be requiring dividends. Here he is not bothered about it, it's own company kind of mindset and its family people are there in the company, other owners. So there is no constant dividend policy, please understand. They don't have constant dividend policy. Generally, chairman withdrawals, whatever he take it for certain expenses are considered to be the dividend and even other shareholders are paid similar portion of dividend. So, dividend is paid, it's not really paid, it's basically considered as the withdrawal from the company by the chairman as the dividend. So, you take that as a dividend and even other director, other shareholders also will be given similar percentage so that they also feel that they also got a return. Other than that, there is no dividend policy and they don't have a concern for the dividend payout because it's not a listed company either. Okay. Company maintained working capital on average turnover of 60 days for inventory, 60 days for trade data. So that's a normal data holding period and inventory holding period, 60 days. Majority of the cash flow has been used to manage incremental working capital and capital expenditure requirement. So your cash flows are used to manage working capital and capital expenditure. Group pricing strategy, you generally, you have to understand 70% of your revenue generation comes from the parent company, 70% revenue comes from parent company, only 30% comes from the subsidy companies. 
group policy on intercompany transaction between the companies related party transaction or within the company the group your transactions are priced at prime cost of the product without adding a markup so this is a transfer pricing concern if at all right your pricing of the goods between the group is at the prime cost than the selling price okay so strategy direction they talk about then the covid impact how the covid impact has impacted they are talking about result of strategy working capital management stock supply relationship pandemic induced pandemic induced adverse factors which prevailed throughout the financial year 2021 so they also got impact of the covid right even though they were trying to manage it but they got the impact of the covid where the business is concerned lockdown was in place 2020 2021 i'm sure like everyone is remembering 2020 march onwards the covid started so in sri lanka first two months march 20th or 30th or 17th or 27th i think you started having the lockdown for two months period till may 11th after that also we had regular uh, intervals we had the lockdowns and restrictions in terms of traveling and going to places so that had impact on this business also but the company has started online sale called buyeosl.com and customers uh, to be reached to gain the lost sales we are the physical is physical movement is restricted then they talk about it related aspects okay and rayan is one of the son he went away from the group in 2009 he went out from the company and he started on his own a business called iosl iosl he started his business and he started growing that business over a period of time and he got market share of the equipment of his equipment 5 percent so he is one of the son who went out from the group or the company and he started on his own a business and basically they have given you the independent financial consultant to prepare five year free cash flow forecast taking into account covid impact so they have been talking about its nx4 and nx5 of the rayans business they have mentioned according to financial statement of 2019 20 2021 chairman of the group has not withdrawn cash from the company considering the covid impact and so holding company has declared dividend for last two years so there was no dividend payout in the last two years even though they were not paying dividends as dividends they only considered that chairman's withdrawals as dividends but even to the 1920 and 2021 even that is out so no dividends were paid for last two years then they are talking about the audit related matters shareholding structure finally in march 2021 herbert own 90% one of the son owns 90% because he is the now new chairman eric owns 5% christina owns 5% so rayan has moved out of the company this ownership of 5% also was given to the chairman so the chairman now has 90% that is is the parent or the father 80% he got and every child got 5% earlier so 80 plus 5 85 and rayans 5% also he got so 90% chairman owns the other two brothers and sister has 5% each this is the ownership of the company and they have given you further information similar company in the market i'm sure if you have been uh, going through case study questions you would realize that every question is having a proxy company information similar company information this can be used to value the company at a later part or the under unseen material point of view you will be asked to value the company so you can me you can be using the similar company information so here again they are given a similar company information beta factor earning per share debt to credit ratio dividend payout ratio market price per share so when you say the market price share and the dividend earning per share you can calculate the p ratio of the company p ratio of the company so that can be used and you have been given a beta factor of the company so by the beta factor you can calculate the cost of equity of the company right please remember that we will be coming to that so this is the 
similar company information. Apart from that, they have set a long term bond rate in the market, it is a 10 percent, long term risk free rate 10 percent. Market return expectation is 16 percent, industry PE 6 times, 6 times. So, that these are the additional information you may be using for CAPM model to calculate the cost of equity and PE ratio is given for industry which can be used to value the shares of the company. Then the industry information is given for your understanding of the case, right. So, you could know about the case. So, if you looked at it is about privately owned, privately owned group. 3 subsidiary companies 100 percent own and 1 subsidiary company 80 percent own. So, you should be knowing that EOSL, EOSL is the parent company which is 70 percent contributing to the group, 70 percent contributing to the group and there are 3 subsidiary companies called ECL, ECL, ELPL, and EEL and HTL. So, these three companies are 100 percent owned and this is 80 percent owned. So, this is a group we are talking about, this is a group we are talking about and the products and services they provide we looked at it. This is a group we are talking about and this group is owned by three shareholders, the chairman himself own 90 percent and there are the two shareholders who are brother and sister 5 percent each. That is the group ownership structure at the moment. And these are the subject companies, four subject companies, three are 100 percent owned, one is 80 percent owned. And apart from that they are talking about a company called IOSL. This is one of the son, Rayan, who started this business and basically he developed that business, he developed that business. So, according to the understanding IOSL, he has developed his business over the past 10 years, ok. You might see that Rayan's information when they gave, they said that Rayan found or he became ill, right, seriously ill and he want to basically take over the company which he developed over the past IOSL. He is willing to give his company back to his brother Herbert who is the chairman at the moment. He wanted the company to be taken over because he wants to see that uh, the business is continued even though he may not be there later. So, this is basically the information given, there is a possibility that the EOSL company will be taken over by the uh, EOSL company, ok. Keep that in mind. So, this is a group structure, this is IOSL we are talking about. So, there is a possibility the IOC will become EOSL group, EOSL group, ok. Then moving there, they talk about the sources of revenue, there are three services they provide office equipment sales and the consumer sales and then they talk about servicing or the maintenance contract. So, those are the three lines of uh, income sources they have for the company. And we know the parent company generates 70 percentage of company, 70 percent company. Strengths, you might see that they have a well good established history as a group and they got good knowledge of the industries and they have been there with more technical know-how people and the people are loyal, people are loyal and long servicing in the company 
and the company is reasonably diversified, reasonably diversified, and they see that dealer distribution network is island wide, dealer distribution network is island wide, to the strengths I am talking, and registered foreign suppliers and local suppliers. So, since they have been in business for long, they have registered foreign supply and local suppliers, and they have got ERP system and they have got quality in terms of production service what they offer. Weaknesses, they have also have seen that certain weaknesses in the company, lack of integrating the accounting package to ERP, ERP. so there are the integration issues in the company, annual physical stock counts have not been done, right, and then main stores not done, that is just for observation, and risk management process, risk management process needs immediate attention, this management process needs immediate attention. That is something has to be looked at. And then company has not had a good uh, dividend policy, right, even though it is owned by the family and one person owns 90 percent, so they do not concern about dividend policy, but you should know that when you are coming to a listed market, you should have a dividend policy and you should have a independent directors, you should have corporate governance rules, uh, compliance, all that have to be done if you are going for listing. But maybe at this moment they are not talking about listing, but you should be aware that in case that unseen material they talk about listing, these are things have to be developed. That means you need to come with the external director board to the, your company and they are, you are needs to give the committees involvement in the company rather than just depending on the few people decision making, you should uh, delegate to the main committee, subcommittee, board subcommittees, and then you need to comply with more rules when you are going for listing. So, as a company, you should come up with certain changes and risk management, one of the important area, you need to be concentrating because otherwise you suddenly will see that your company businesses are going to be in difficult times, difficult times. And especially with the COVID at that time, you would have seen that there are a lot of issues or challenges coming to the company. So, unless you get ready, get ready to solve, you will be in trouble. And actually, the exchange rate risk, if you take the same case, today's contact, and being an imported company, importing goods company, you will be seeing a major problem, because most of these equipments are imported. So, all these equipments, pricing will be a problem, and your cost will go up continuously because of exchange rate depreciation, and your losses can be there, unless you price it immediately to customer, you can always face a difficulty. So, these are some of the things at unseen level or the pre-seen level, we can, we can understand and we can get ready with the knowledge, it can get ready with the knowledge. So, financial strategy, investor strategy, dividend policy, that is one of the other thing, dividend policy. So, we got idea, the company does not have a dividend policy. So, that could be one of the thing they need to look at it, if they are going for IPO or if you are going to plan for multiple shareholders you need to come up with a dividend policy because every investor would like to have dividends on a regular basis even if you are profitable that is something expect, expectation is there in the investor's point of view. So, when you now go to the financials, financials, they have given the EOSL that is a parent company, they have given two columns for company and two columns for group. So, you can see that company revenue, company revenue 2.1 billion has become 1.8, 2020 to 21. So, this is basically the year where the COVID was there. That is because 2020, April or March, mid onwards, COVID started. So, you have started having problems of the COVID from 2020 March onwards. So, this is the year, 2021 March, that one year, is severe impacted period, especially for this kind of businesses. So, you see that 2.1 billion has become 1.8 because your sales have dropped. Even though you have tried much as possible with your online sales, still your sales have dropped. And the group also you could see the drop. So, if you look at the percentage of drop, it is almost 14 percent revenue drop in terms of company, in terms of group. And we know that 70 percent revenue generated from the parent company. So, that parent company drop is there mean group is also to go through the same drop unless the subject company extremely do well. So, you will see that 2.1 has become 1.8, 3.1 has 2.6. So, that means group revenue, the top line had dropped. That is serious concern, but everyone knows the reason for the drop is because of the COVID, okay. 
Then you need to look at the company. First look at the parent company. You can see their GP also has dropped from 924 to 793. If you look at the margin, GP margin, you calculate GP divided by sales. GP margin of the company earlier, 2020, it is 43%, 43%. 2021, it has become 38%. So your GP margin has dropped from 43 to 38. So that is mainly because not the sales drop. Don't ever think GP margin drop is because of sales drop. It's not need to be. Right? The sales drop is your top line is dropping because you don't have enough demand in the market because of COVID, people can't come physically and buy goods. But the GP margin drop is mainly because your cost of sales started increasing. Cost of sales started increasing. When the cost of sales started increasing, your GV margin reduces. So 43% GV margin has become 38%, 38%. So that is a key drop you can see in terms of GP. 924 million becomes 703. That means 200 million or more than 200 million, your GP has come down. Then when you look at admin express come down, obviously, as I mentioned uh, during COVID, some of people, some people can't come to work, so office cost, office running cost comes down because no electricity usage, right? Some of the rent can be reduced. Some of the services you wouldn't have got, cleaning services, security services, some of the things you wouldn't have got it, right? Traveling cost you wouldn't have paid for stuff because they don't travel to work. So there are some of the costs you would have saved by which the admin cost have come down 494 to 462. Then when you look at the profit. 311 become 124. Significant drop, almost 200 million drop. As I mentioned, the 200 million drop came from where the GP drop, gross profit drop. Because your sales drop, cost of sales increase, your GP also dropped. So that is why your profitability concern has been noted. Then when you're looking at the group, revenue drop, you will see that 14 percent drop in revenue, GP margin. Your GB margin was 44% in 2020, which has come down to 42%. So obviously due to the GB margin of the parent drop, your group GP margin also dropped. Then moving on the group profitability, you can see that profit after tax 561 become 256. 561 become 256, which is almost 300 million drop. Out of 300 million drop, 200 million drop comes from the parent. 100 million comes from the subsidy company. So you will see that your overall profitability of the group dropped mainly from the parent, but subsidies also contributed the profit drop. Okay, that overall the revenue drop and the cost of sales increase are the key reasons why your profitability has gone down. Profitability has gone down. Even though your admin costs have reduced, you will have to note that overall, overall your profit drop is coming from the your revenue drop and cost of sales increase. When you look at your balance sheet, company and group, you can see that company equity capital, company's equity capital, 2.1 billion has become 2.2 billion because you have a slight profit anyway, right? 2.1 billion has become 2.2 billion, slight increase in your profits as in benefited to your group, company as well as group. So you can see that equity has gone up. When you look at, very important, is your debt financing. Debt financing. How is your debt financing? You can see that interest bearing borrowing, interest bearing borrowing, company has 225 million, group has 339 million. So when you calculate your debt out of your total capital, total capital, 2.2 billion is your equity, whereas your interest bearing borrow is 225 million. So, which is very insignificant, even less than 10 percent. Less than 10 percent you have borrowing. So, your debt financing is very low. I think that is what they mentioned the financing strategy. Company do not depend on debt. And they do debt borrowing, do debt borrowing only if there is a working capital requirement. Even then, even then, they will try to settle the loans early as possible because this is a cash rich company, cash rich company. So they get enough operation cash flow, positive cash flow. So they settle the loans, even if they take loans, they settle early as possible. 
Okay. So that we can see that from the loans, it's only 225 million. It's not a significant amount when you look at 2.2 billion equity capital. So even here, the group 2.8 billion equity and 339 million loans. So it's also a small loans capacity. And this is also current liability. That means you have taken only short term loans, not a long term loans. The company does not have long term loan, only short term loan. So that basically indicates that you are not a really geared company, really geared company. Even though you have debt small portion, you don't have to worry about the gearing because you don't have gearing. But that is the negative also. Why? A company which is profitable, company which is profitable, always have to use, make use of the debt capital. Make use of your debt capital so that you can borrow at a lower cost and earn return more than your cost of debt and give the balance to the shareholder. So shareholder value will really get created more and more when you borrow money. If anyone thinks that borrowing is a bad thing, you know, borrowing is a good thing, provided your business have a good business and you make profits. That means your return has to be more than cost of debt. If your return is more than cost of debt, it's better that you borrow money so that you can give extra return to shareholder, extra return to the shareholder. Only thing, your extreme level of gearing is not at all acceptable. So generally, 75% and above is, I, I would say, as extreme gearing. So if you are talking about even 50% gearing is not a bad idea, provided that your return is more than cost of debt. So this company is anyway profitable, so it indicates that you have enough opportunity to borrow money, opportunity to borrow money. And they have excess funds also, so they are not having enough opportunities. Why the company, one of the investment policy decision is that they don't want to acquire companies, they don't want to invest in capital markets, they don't want to invest in other alternative investment, they are only investing in money market instrument and organic growth. So due to that, they have excess funds, they don't make use of debt, they are not creating wealth for shareholders. They ideally should be creating wealth for shareholders more than what they do because they should be investing in various other alternatives and they should be making use of debt capital. But they don't do at this moment. So when you calculate return on equity before moving on to IAO itself, return on equity, that is profit after tax divided by equity, return on equity when you calculate, 2020 the company, 2020 the company has return on equity of 14%. 2021 it's 5%. So 2020 return on equity 14% has become 5%. So it has dropped. That we observed. The GP dropped, your profit after tax dropped, so obviously return on equity dropped. So that drop is mainly because of the COVID related issues. COVID related issues and increase in your cost of sales. Nothing else. But even this return on equity can be increased if you are strategized to invest in various investment alternatives and if you can manage or if you can borrow money and make use it for the company business. So if you could do those strategies properly, you can earn more return for the shareholder. But the, at the moment, company does not want it. Group return on equity, if you look at last year 22%, la current year 9%. So your group return on equity also significantly dropped, mainly coming from the parent company drop and addition, the subject company drop, okay. So keep that in mind. Then when you look at the liquidity ratios, I'm, I don't want to talk about it, but I'm sure like all of you all should get the idea, even before calculating numbers, what should be the liquidity ratio of this company. Because this company says that they have excess funds, they have excess funds, and they don't uh, depend on borrowings. So they settle, even the short term borrowings that they take, they settle fast as possible. So that basically indicates that their liquidity level should be very high. Liquidity level should be high. So if you calculate liquidity level of the company, liquidity levels of the company, you will see that the company if you take the company liquidity current ratio and a quick ratio. If you take the two ratios, current ratio and quick ratio, current ratio company 2.1 is to 1. Quick ratio 1.46 is to 1. Same thing if you look at it for a group. Current ratio group 2. 
zero seven and one point four. So this is a group ratio, group ratio of current and quick ratio. This is two thousand twenty one. I am talking about two thousand twenty one. You can calculate twenty also. That all the similar levels, similar levels, right? Basically, what it indicates to us, the liquidity of the company is really good. Liquidity of the company is really good. Your quick ratio to pay one rupee of day-to-day -day liability, you have one point four six. That means you have reasonable amount of money to pay your liability on a day-to-day -day basis. So, if you take the current ratio is two point one, it is reasonable, good. So you don't have to worry about your liquidity. So in terms of liquidity, your company does not have concern at the moment, or the group does not have concern at this moment. The inventory holding, debtors holding, if you take inventory holding period has increased compared to last year. Inventory holding period has increased compared to last year. That is obvious because due to COVID, there were lesser sales. People don't visit physical locations, so the sales drop. But you might have got inventory, keeping expecting the same sales. So inventory holding period has gone up. So that's a natural. So that you need to understand because of COVID. Debtors holding period are reduced. Debtors holding period are reduced. That's a good thing, right? But obviously the companies will have to face uh, collection of debtors from the people because of the COVID. There are a lot of business got affected. So the payments will be having problem for the company. Any business you take, people are feeling the difficulty of collecting money. So that is one of the thing, a concern from the data's point of view. Supply credit has increased compared to last year. You can see the trade payables, 254 million become 455 million. So that is something uh, noting, important to note. The supply payments have been delayed. Supply payments have been delayed. Right, even though we have bought more inventory, more inventory, the supplier payments have been delayed. Right, 381 day, 381 million company inventory has become 550 million. That is the inventory position. But debtors position, 750 become 680, 680. So that is the uh, reduction has happened because the most of the time your sales have been happening through the online platform. Online platform, you are basically getting your money on time. Right, compared to your physical sale, where you might give it on a credit to sell the goods to customers. Okay, so that's basically give you the idea about liquidity, gearing ratio. No point in calculating because you are a lowest gear company. You have very little gearing in the company. You have not made use of the gearing. Made use of the gearing, even though you are a profitable company. So that is something has to be considered. So if you look at this is a group picture. Then moving into the IOSL, this is a Rayans company who started the company and he has developed the company to this level. So they have given you the PNL. So 500 million revenue the company is generating at the moment. Compared to last year, the profits have dropped from 28 million to 7 million. This is a Rayans company. So he, he is willing to. Ryan is willing to sell the company before his demise because he feels that he is sick. So he should get this company to be run by his brother. So he, they are willing to take it over. Maybe in the unseen material, we should be given or we should be evaluating this company for the uh, whether to uh, at what price to buy the company because this is a company they are going to take over. So they have to find out what is the value they should pay to buy this company. So this is about IOS. So you are given IOS a balance sheet. You can see that based on the equity, 137 million worth company. 137 million worth company you are getting. This is another company. This is 80% owned company of this group. They have given you the PNL. That was the PNL. You can see the revenue had dropped compared to last year. Profit was had dropped compared to last year. This is 80% owned company. This is the only company the group bought it, acquired the company. Other three companies are they are self. Uh, created or maybe the organic growth company. This is the only acquisition company they have done. So they have given you the 80% owned companies uh, balance sheet. You can see that 
which is around 68 million in the balance sheet, so equity to the shareholder. So this is basically the pre-seen level, the information available. So we have got an idea about the company or the group and what are the present challenges the company has faced and what are the uh, things they need to address to improve the company. We have discussed on that. Their investment strategy, how good it is. Financial strategy, how, it good, how good it is. We have touched upon it. And in the future, the possibility of IOSL becoming the sub J company is possible. I think there is one place they mentioned the, there is a foreign supplier is interested to get into Sri Lankan market through EOSL. So there is a possibility of acquisition transaction over the future because of the foreign company invest, uh, interested. So that's something we need to keep in mind. As I mentioned, in terms of valuation, in terms of valuation part, in terms of valuation part, they have given you a competitor company information. Based on that, we can calculate cost of equity, cost of equity of the competitor company, where the risk free rate is 10 percent and the beta is 0 0.7979 and your risk premium is 16 percent minus 10 percent. So you can see that your cost of equity of the competitor company is 14.73 percent. 14.73 percent is the cost of equity of the competitor or similar company in the market. And they have given you the competitor company's market price and the earning per share. As I mentioned at the beginning, you can use the information given, market price 82 and P ratio is X and earning per share 16.14. So that basically tell us the P ratio is 5 point. P ratio is 5.08 times. So this is the based on the competitor or similar company information the market price and earning per share is given. Based on that, we calculate the P-E ratio of the similar company and the cost of equity of the similar company. So 14.73 is the similar company expectation in the market and market price based P-E ratio is 5.08. But we have been given industry P-E ratio as 6 times. Industry P-E ratio as 6 times. So we can use that industry PE ratio to calculate the value of the our company in the market. If you want to do that, we can use the industry PE ratio as 6. But this company information PE ratio is in derived number 5.08. So this is the industry PE ratio. Then based on the beta factor of the competitor company, beta factor of the competitor company, we can calculate, we can calculate what is the asset beta. We can calculate the asset beta. So, competitor company is a geared company, competitor company or similar company geared company. Based on the geared company information, we can calculate ungeared company, ungeared company beta. So, which is 0 0.79 into 5 divided by 5 plus 7, 1 minus 224. That gives us the asset beta is 0.38. That means ungeared beta, ungeared beta is 0.38. So this can be used to calculate the geared beta of the our company we are talking about. As we know that our company is a basically no gearing or lowest gearing. So we do not have to seriously worry about, but this beta 0.38 reflect uh, ungeared beta. So it is like that our company, our group, the case, whatever we are talking, the group riskiness, riskiness, business riskiness is somewhere around 0.38. It is not very much more than this because this is your asset beta. And equity beta of the 
group we are talking about will not be significantly more because they don't have a significant gearing, significant gearing. So no financial risk or very low financial risk, only business risk is there in your business. Due to that, your asset beta will be 0.38, which is more relevant to your group. Okay. So when you look at the case again, before we go into unseen material and a question, at the moment, there are certain concerns, certain concerns we have. One, the revenue has dropped, due to the COVID revenue has dropped 14 percent. Profitability has dropped, that is again with the COVID impact, cost of sales has gone up and revenue drop as resulted in your profit to drop. Then debt underutilized, very important, financial strategy underutilized. You are not utilized your debt capital capacity. Uh, that is something you are doing not right for your shareholders because your primary objective of the corporate is to create shareholder wealth. So you are not working towards that significantly. Third, return on equity is lower. That is again a deriving from the your profitability concerns. Deriving from the profitability concerns. Then your excess cash. You have excess cash, which is giving, which is invested in a lower return. You are investing in money market return investment opportunity, which means you are not generating more return for the shareholders. So you are trying much as possible, put it into money market instrument rather than taking little bit of risk and get more return for shareholder. So that is the investment strategy concern which has to be addressed. Then your company, as you know, that's the nature of this industry where you are importing and selling goods. You need to understand that your showrooms. Most of the showrooms have higher fixed cost, higher fixed cost. That is because uh, the companies, uh, showrooms will have fixed salary people and you might have rented out premises and your air condition and your very nicely lighting is to be there for the showrooms to be having attracting customers. So, and then you have uh, general cost like electricity, rent, uh, security, all that costs are fixed cost, whether you have business or no, you have to spend those costs. Actually, during COVID period, most of the organization felt it properly. How much you are dependent on fixed cost? If you are dependent on fixed cost, you are in trouble because if you don't have sales, your fixed cost become your loss. So you need to be careful when you are looking at your fixed cost management. Try to convert your fixed cost component into variable component. I think one good thing during COVID, people started doing business online, doing business online. So people, even the customers started buying online. So that basically reduce your fixed cost importance. You may not need to expand your business continuously by opening showrooms. You can try much as possible to achieve your sales through online so that your fixed cost component of your business can come down that will convert into your profits, convert into profits. Then they have a higher tax rate, higher tax calculation, so which should be looked at an unseen material. Then one of the other concern you might have to look at is exchange rate problem, exchange rate problem. But I think the overall this paper have touched upon exchange rate too much. So maybe the uh, case study also may not touch the exchange rate. But to be honest, these are companies which are importing goods and selling in the local market. So obviously exchange rate is a serious uh, concern or the risk aspect you have to look at and risk management has to be done. Okay. Then debtors delay, debtors delay, pricing, supplier delay, you have to find out why the supplier delay is observed. You need to go into detail in the unseen level. Then the dividend policy as I mentioned, even though it is a family owned company, uh, running this business, the dividend policy needs to be in place so that you have a better image when you are coming to the, in case you are going for IPO or getting other shareholder into the business. So it's better that you get into a dividend policy. So these are the, some of the concerns, some of the concerns you need to be aware at the case study pre-seen level so that you are aware what are the things you could be addressing in the unseen level. Okay. So we will now going to start the unseen material question and discuss it.